the stores. What is the matter with you? What do you want me to do? We're in LA. People get their shit stolen all the time no, here. You know what it is? You you never look both ways. You never check your surroundings Can't ever. Can we just reschedule our flight or something? Yeah, it's that just that easy. Maybe it's somewhere in the parking lot. The dressing room. It must have fallen out. I'll be back. What's good, YouTube? All knowing, all loving, all feeling, all seeing, all powerful. Just damn all everything. Sex is hell, host of Life Gains channel. Bringing you your life gains and financial fortification, relationship fortification, because you know I'm a married guy and I love my wife and we've been together for about nine years now, but it takes work to make that happen. What you guys seen at the very beginning of this video, did you see the look on that husband's face? He looked like he wanted to push his wife down two flights of stairs. He was so mad with her. And oftentimes in relationships, the two top things that cause split, divorce, or breakup is infidelity issues. But number one that's often overlooked is financial matters. And those issues matter. We all come from various backgrounds. We all have different experiences with money. And let's just be honest, just like dieting, money is one of those things where a lot of us come up short. You have to work on a good behavior to get your finances in order and that includes your credit as well and you enter a relationship having that baggage and if you don't figure out how to communicate with your spouse it can be very tough to overcome that shortcoming and that can ruin a relationship quickly so this video is about helping you guys understand some of the signs and what you can do to fix it i got my homegirl the psychologist up here to kind of talk about the ways you can communicate to do it so let's go ahead and get into it with number one, financial infidelity. So what does that entail? Financial infidelity can be just as devastating to your marriage as a relationship. It can be much more common than many people imagine. A financial betrayal can often start off small and seem meaningless at first, like claiming that certain items were on sale when they weren't, or dipping a little into the joint savings account. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to dip into a joint savings account, you have to discuss that with your spouse. You can't just be dipping into what you guys put together as a group of money for the future and spend it. Here are some things you need to ask yourself. Do you routinely use deceptive means to hide purchases like stashing, shopping bags somewhere before your partner sees them? Do you have debt that your partner doesn't know about? Have you invested money in risky ventures, co-signed on loans, or lent a large amount of money to friends? family and other people those are all financial infidelities if you don't tell your partner you have to tell your partner about it in essence i'm going to say you need to get permission from your partner if that union and when you come together as a union you're supposed to be one is important all matters dealing with finances unless it's something very very finite need to be discussed number two this one's easy keeping up with the joneses as an individual your goals have to be for the betterment of the relationship. And if you all can't afford something together, then you as an individual definitely don't need it. We all know someone who's tried to live like the Kardashians on retail sales, basically front desk management money. These bad spending habits typically develop over time, but they can creep up when your financial situation has changed, like after a loss of a job, when you're under stress, that type of thing. Ladies and gentlemen, the best thing for you to do in those situations is set a budget with your spouse, have maybe a little allowance for each one of you to spend monthly within the realms of each other, and don't exceed those bounds. Don't go get a Bentley when you parking lot pimping on a Ford Taurus budget. That one's easy. Number three might shock you, being too cheap. Here are some things you need to ask yourself because sometimes trying to be too tight, tight niche on your budget can make it can lead to devastation. You need to live a little bit, but ask yourself some of these questions. Do you have unrealistic goals about how little should be spent on household necessities? You've got to spend some money on certain necessities. Do you have a compulsive anti-spending habit 
that are extreme enough to cause stress to a partner trying to conform to them. Like I said, you guys are a union and that must be considered. Do you judge your partner harshly because they don't think the same way you do about money? That happens often and you've got to have a little bit of understanding for the common good of the house. Do you threaten or punish your partner? And you know some of y'all women to be talking about taking away the draws fast. Talk to them like a child when they don't follow the rules that you set up and they didn't even agree to them. Wow, that says a lot. So basically being too cheap is just saying there are certain things in life you need in a relationship and you want to make sure those things are taken care of and sometimes you might have to spend on those. But in all cases, you find the best deal so that you're saving money. Number four, financial jealousy. Hmm. Like infidelity, the word jealousy is often assumed to be about sex, but jealousy over money can wreak havoc as well, whether it's with a spouse, friend, or even a close worker or family. Here's an example. Maybe your partner comes from a wealthy family or is more successful than you. When you start feeling yourself being envious or resentful, the temptation will be strong to try to ignore it and hope that it will go away. If the difference in your financial situation is persistent, then the feelings are bound to persist as well if you don't deal with them. So basically, if your spouse comes from a good situation or your spouse is, is you know, climbing the ladder in their job, if you feel a little jealous about that, tell your spouse. Your spouse is there to help you. Remember, y'all are supposed to be acting as one even though you're separate entities. And if you oftentimes just communicate with your spouse, you can fix that. Last one, but definitely not the least one, is financial baggage. People nowadays are coming into relationships with all kinds of student debt, credit card debt, bad credit. And when you decide to join with someone else, you have to discuss those things. You've got to have a plan of action to get those things corrected in a certain amount of time so that during the long run, those are not going to be something that stumble you guys up and cause an argument. These are things you've got to think about when you are trying to get together and get your relationships together. And one of the most important things to go along to capsulize this whole conversation is how do you discuss these things with your spouse? And like I said, I got my homegirl, the therapist here to talk to you guys about how to properly discuss these things with your spouse. Let's take a look at what she has to say. Hi, I'm Dr. Andrea Vaughn, your licensed clinical psychologist, here to talk to you today about how to have difficult conversations about money. The first thing to remember is that the context matters. Some people have the perfect conversation starter, but they do it at the wrong time. It's not private or it's rushed. Make sure that you and your partner are both in a place to be receptive to having conversations. And don't be reactive. If you're really angry in the moment and you want to bring it up then, that's probably not a good idea because you're not going to be as level-headed as possible. The second thing to remember is not to generalize. If you're upset about something specific, make sure you don't blow it out of proportion. There's a big difference between saying I've been upset about your spending versus you've never been able to save money. So think about the way that you phrase things and whether or not it feels like a personal attack on your partner. Also, if you're confiding something about yourself, make sure you keep that same perspective as well. Think about feelings. There's a trick in couples therapy to use I statements when talking about how your partner's behavior affects you, and it'll be much less likely that you'll put your partner on the defensive if you use I statements. I have been feeling upset about such and such. I have been feeling scared or anxious or angry. It's a much better way to start the conversation than to say, you've been doing this, which immediately puts them on the defensive because they feel like it's all about what they've been doing wrong and their behavior. Finally, think about compromise. Go into the conversation with some active and tangible solutions about what you think could help. Without that, you don't have a roadmap, but if there's something specific that you want changed. You want to set up a budget to attack the debt. You want to set some limits about the upcoming renovation. You want to work with a marriage counselor about financial infidelity. Have that in mind already so that you can have something to shoot for when you're speaking. And finally, when you're done speaking, really listen. A lot of people know exactly what they want to say, but they're not prepared to truly listen. 
in the difficult conversations. And they're always one step ahead imagining what they're going to say next without actually letting what their partner says sink in. Money issues are so difficult in a relationship that you might have to revisit the conversation multiple times and you want to make sure that you're able to hear truly what your partner is going to say because not only does it give you a better scenario and perspective of what to say back, but it also makes them feel heard and that's going to get you much farther in the difficult conversations. Keep this in mind the next time you have to talk about bringing and talk about money and don't delay. These conversations are important. Thank you. Well, guys, I hope this is going to help you in your relationship goals and needs because in the Life Games channel, we believe in a healthy relationship. We want you guys to be aspiring together, working as one unit with two individual parts, taking yourself to the next level because that is sexy as hell and that is definitely a life game. And if you want to know some more tips, you've been together a long time, hit me in the bottom with some comments. How long have you been married? How long have you been together? What barriers have you overcome financially that put a strain on your relationship, but you guys find a way to work it out? That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like my video, comment, and subscribe. Go out there and get yourself that life game. If you subscribe, hit that notification bell. Become a member of the Life Game Notification Squad so that you get an email every time I drop a video. Check my video description box below this video. Check out my affiliate links. There are some free links to get some products down there. There are some past videos with me. Check them out. Do business with me. Do business with them. Until the next Sex is Hell video, I'll see you. If you enjoy the content on my channel, please take your cursor, click the subscribe button. If you want to receive an alert every time I drop a new video, click the little bell. And if you want to connect with me on Facebook, you can click this button. If you want to connect with me on my other social media, I got a button for you here, a button for you here. And if you're one of those people that want to make a donation, donations can be made through my Patreon account by going to www.patreon.com forward slash life gains. You can also get private videos done. This is how you can support my channel. Just click here and become a Patreon and you will continue to get great content by Life Game.